transformer is one of the most efficient device and used widely across the industry and in this video we are going to learn the working of transformer and if you want to know the construction of transformer as you can see on the screen then you can jump to this video and understand the construction and here in this video we are going to learn the working of transformer with animation so without wasting time let's quickly jump to the video it transfers energy from one ac circuit to another ac circuit by either increasing voltage level or decreasing voltage level but it will keep the supply frequency constant in input and output and the power is constant in input and output when i say power is constant i am assuming that there is no loss in transformer so this is the definition of transformer and now we are going to understand the working of transformer but before we jump into the transformer we should have some basic idea about ac and dc magnetic field so let's have understanding of that first when we flow a dc current through the conductor it will produce a magnetic field the magnetic field will be constant in magnitude and the direction of that magnetic field will be constant it looks like a permanent magnet whereas when we flow ac current through the conductor the current's magnitude is continuously changing and at every half cycle current changes its direction and because of the nature of this current the magnetic field produced because of this current follows the same nature so the magnetic field produced because of the ac current it is continuously changing its magnitude and it will change its direction every half cycle so this is the difference between dc magnetic field and ac magnetic field keep this thing in mind because in future we are going to use this thing magnetic field produced because of single conductor is not that much strong to make a strong magnetic field a coil is being wound now we'll use this coil to produce a magnetic field so when ac current flows through this coil it produces a changing magnetic field which alters its direction every half cycle when we bring another coil near to this magnetic field emf induces in that coil why do you remember the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction what does it says when you place a conductor in changing magnetic field emf will be induced in that conductor and that emf will be equal to E is equal to n d phi by d t, where d phi by d t is rate of change of flux. So here, changing flux is continuously associated with secondary coil, and because of this phenomena, E M F induces in the secondary coil. And this is the working principle of transformer. There are two ways we can induce D M F. One is dynamically, another is statically. Here, I am sure you all are clear about statically induced D M F. because there is no moving part the emf induced in the transformer is called as statical induced emf but in statically induced emf there are two types of emf let me take you through that when current flows through a coil and because of the changing magnetic field emf induces itself in that coil that is known as self induced emf whereas because of current flowing through one coil and because of the changing magnetic field of that coil if emf is induces in second coil then that is known as mutually induced emf so after observing these two cases if you know which of the case is true for the transformer then write that thing in comments below whether it is self induced emf or mutually induced emf in transformer now let's jump to the next now here you can see that still there is some magnetic field which is not linked with the secondary coil so to increase this linkage instead of keeping this two coils floating in air a core material is used and on that core material this coil is being wound this is the core and this is how the primary winding is done on the core and this is how the secondary winding is done on the core when we connect supply to the primary winding because of that supply 
current starts flowing through the winding. Because of that current, a magnetic field is produced in the primary coil. Now, we are using core. So, using this core, the flux produced in the primary winding will be linked with the secondary coil. And because of this changing magnetic field associates with the secondary coil, EMF gets induced in the secondary coil. And you can see on the display that how EMF is getting induced in the secondary coil. Now, as you can see, the current is flowing through the primary winding, but current is not flowing through the secondary winding. Why it is like this? It is because we have kept the secondary terminal winding open. We have not connected the terminal. The circuit is not getting closed. When we close the circuit through connecting any load, current will start flowing through the secondary winding. So this is how this transformer works. Now here, EMF not only induces into the winding, but that also induces into the core. And because of that thing, there are power losses in the core. To avoid those power losses, the core material is being chosen appropriately. Generally, silicon steel material is being used as a core material of transformer. And this type of thin laminated sheets of silicon steel materials are stacked together to create a core material. And then winding is wound on the primary side as well as on the secondary side. Why all these things is to be done? If you want to know the reason behind that, then I am going to prepare a separate in detail animated video to explain both this phenomena, hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. So if you want to watch that video, do not forget to hit the like button in this video. Once I'll get 1000 like in this video, I'll post the next video, the next in detail animated video of hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. Why, reason, all those stuffs will be there in that video. Here you can see that each turn in secondary winding is connected in series with each other. So when the flux of primary winding gets associated, gets linked with the secondary winding, EMF will be induced in all of these windings. So that is known as ES. So if you want to know the total induced EMF on the terminal, that will be the sum of all individual induced EMF in each turn. And because of this, we will get the equation as ES is equal to induced EMF per turn into multiply by total number of secondary turn. Now, the flux which is linking to the secondary winding, it is the same flux which links with the primary winding. So, the flux linkage in secondary and primary is the same. So, because of this, we can say that the induced EMF in primary coil or the per turn induced EMF in the primary coil will be the same as per turn induced EMF in secondary coil. So, for that, we can write EP is equal to ES. Now, the total voltage in primary that we are applying, which is equal to EP. So from this we can write another equation that is EP is equal to small EP into NP. NP is the primary numbers of turn. From this equation we can replace this EP over here. And if we place the value of this EP in this equation we will get new updated equation like this. And this equation shows the relation between primary winding and secondary winding primary numbers of turn and secondary numbers of turn. So simply I can say that if we increase secondary numbers of turn, we will get more voltage in output and if we reduce secondary numbers of turn, we will get lesser output voltage. From this, the transformer can be classified into two groups. Now we will have two transformers. With transformer number one, we will connect less numbers of turns in secondary and we will see what will happen when flux linkage with that turns. And we will have more numbers of turn in secondary coil of transformer number 2 and we will see what will happen when the flux linkage with that numbers of turn. So for transformer 1, when we give the supply, it will produce less voltage in output 
whereas in transformer 2 where there are more numbers of turn in secondary it will produce more voltage in output or the magnitude of produced voltage will be higher than the input. So from this we can classify transformer into two categories when the output voltage is less than the input voltage that transformer is said to be step down transformer in our case is this. And when the output voltage is higher than the input voltage, that transformer is known as the step up transformer. In our case, this transformer is the step up transformer. Now, in power station, when power is produced, the voltage level is near about 6.6 .6 kV. But there is a switchyard near to that power plant, and in that switchyard, there is a transformer who steps up the voltage and make it to a higher level. Now far away from that power plant there is a city area. So to supply that city area there is a long transmission line connected between the city and power plant. The step up transformer provided near to the power station will boost the voltage, step up the voltage and transmit the power at higher voltage level near about 132 kV. After the traveling of that power through the long transmission line, it reaches to near the city area. Near the city area, there is a step down transformer. That step down transformer reduces that higher kV voltage to a lower kV voltage and that distributes the power at low or a medium voltage level near about 11 kV. So this is where the transformer are being used. There are so much applications of transformer and if you want to know the applications then I have a separate video for that. You can watch that later on. So this is what, how and where the transformer is being used. If you want to learn more electrical stuffs with animations then you can check out my channel Learning Vibes. And if there is a specific topic which you want to learn through animation then write that thing in comments below and I'll make video on that topic. So if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel. So until we meet again in our next video, till the time, bye bye.